All right, welcome back. This is MDog, and we are going to create a hardcore character. I've talked about doing this. Uh, the Paladin has been our main, and I eventually may actually make a Paladin hardcore tune and see kind of like what changes we want to make uh, based on that. But uh, for now, let's get into it. So this is going to be a hardcore. Um, it is cycle, and we are ready to go. So you probably know this, but on last epoch, a normal character versus a hardcore character. Hardcore will have permadeath. So if we die, this character is done and we'd have to start afresh. I actually tried to, um, <coughs> I tried to start this uh, yesterday and the uh for some reason like there was a bug where like loot wasn't dropping at all so uh, i made it like through two maps before i finally realized like i just could not get loot to drop and um eventually what i did was uh sort of you know exit out and restart and then loot started loot started to drop but it just seemed so awkward that i just decided like ah, let's uh let's just start over we didn't get that far anyway but it was good because it got me thinking through some of the skills. Um, as I was running that character, I was definitely interested in the uh, punk I think it's called puncture. It's one of the skills, so we don't get it immediately, but we will. We should get it, you know, towards the midway point of this video or or so. But it seemed like a pretty good good ability because I think it will, if I remember correctly. We gotta be careful of these fire, especially since we don't have any, uh, ooh, we could get short bow this soon. Let's try it. So, the what I was wanting to do is focus on using a bow. So, um, again, it was hard. <laughs> when loot doesn't drop, it's hard to do much of anything. But now we can figure out, okay. So yes, this, at least this ability does work with both. And I think a lot of the abilities for the, uh, for the rogue, eventually the falconeer are going to work this way where we can do either melee or, or, uh, or combat using the bow. The only thing I don't like is it seems like this has pretty much turned this into a, a single target ability. Yeah, it says melee or bow attack. Melee or bow attack, three rapid strikes. The last strike can be canceled by moving. We're gonna hit level two in a second here and we'll get another ability that we can try out. This does allow us to, from range perhaps. So shuriken, which is just harder to control, but it is obviously an ability that does uh, range damage as well. All right, traveling staff. What is this going to do for us? I mean, really anything that helps us have a little extra damage right now, we'll take. So now we're back to doing a melee because of the staff we equipped. But like I said, right now we just want to be able to survive and uh, be somewhat efficient. our first first pot there swapping skills burning forest Oh, I guess we probably, since we hit level two, we can put a skill point in, I think. All right, so at level four, we can start leveling up our skills. I guess I mean a passive point. Uh, oh, we don't have any points. So you don't get one at level two? Is that what we're saying? A little strange. We have to... <laughs> I think we just have to be really careful here early. It's 
especially on a hardcore tune, it just can get scary quickly, especially before you have much of a build or any uh, any gear. All right, so it's gonna be another single-handed weapon. Um, health on kill, I mean, that's, I don't think that's worth switching to that. Okay. So now we got shift, which does help us move a little more quickly. When you arrived, it was me. I can look. Are you good? Name come. Let me watch you fight. All right. So now we can put our first point in. Uh, I actually think all three of these passives on the first line are really important. Um. We at least want one point in Guile, because that allows us to put one point in Evasion, and then eventually to put points in Agility, which just seems potentially like that's pretty good for most builds we might create. But because this is hardcore, I actually think we probably need to give attention to both of these, and eventually probably max them both out, but for now, I think we'll just alternate between the two. I will go the more damage focused one initially, but not not permanently. I mean, not only exclusively is what I'm trying to say. Smoke. I'm doubting myself on whether or not puncture works with bow or not. Just can't remember. We're, uh, I think worth farming a little bit. We don't want to accidentally push ahead and then just end up a little weak for the space that we're fighting it. I like that this person we're fighting with actually does some, uh, It says something's equipped, but it's not. <laughs> okay, there we go. <clears throat> we do have a shield now, but I think we'll still stick with what we have. We'll see if Puncture actually allows us to use range or not. I can't remember now. I just remember thinking I liked Puncture, but... Okay, there's level four, so we'll do a point in steady hand. And I guess we will, we're mostly using flurry right now. I guess we'll just put flurry up here.
Where'd you learn to fight? All right. So did I successfully equip? Yes. Now, I don't think it really matters what we take here because we're not going to stick with this for very long. Um, let's just go attack speed for right now. Quick, before it reaches town. There. I'll see you ahead. Picked up another short bow. Okay. Same armor. And then what we have on is better. At least it's something. I think we're good. Okay. The keepers, they're not guarding the ruins. They're traveling between them. Over and over. They must be losing with them. Oh yeah, next time we... Um, so one, uh, one thing I was able to do is create a sort of starter um, loot filter. And... Once we're out and there's actually loot on the ground again, we'll I'll take a look at it and we can kind of I'll show you what I've done and see if it seems like it's working. It's now speaking of, I must head there now. Feel free to look around. Okay. Okay, so we know we don't want this stuff. It is uh, hardcore, so we probably ought to get in the habit early on, especially of if we see something that's an upgrade, taking it. Um, we could use... We could use these, I would say. And melee damage or stun chance. Nine plus two, nine plus two plus more melee damage. I know we're going to end up wanting to use a, um, a bow. If we were going to use that, of course, we'd want to be dual wielding, but we can't dual wield yet, so oh. we'll just... Keep it like that till we get another drop, I guess, uh, for a shield. Grail was one of the bold, bold, no, you could they sure do this, and our alliance is secure. Okay. Lend our aid to heal so let's we'll see how dangerous this feels in terms of moving to this next map. And again, once we get some loot on the ground, we'll look at the loot filter a little bit. Okay.
puncture comes at five and it can be physical melee or bow attack okay good I do like that the skills, most of them seem to be pretty flexible. Very close now. In this let's take a look here so we actually want to go here and respec despecialize skill there's no penalty for doing that you just lose progress on you know what you had leveled with that skill but if we know we want to level up puncture then we might as well trade it out well the next skill we can start leveling up will be at our level eight so the question with puncture and i haven't looked at this closely but we sort of want to figure out is there a particular direction we want to go? I always enjoy when one ability has a chance to proc another ability. Like I'm seeing this Death's Imprint has a chance to apply a shadow dagger on hit. And so that's kind of cool. Um, let's see, what if we search apply? Would that have showed up? Yes. Okay. So there's multiple things showing. So that has a, a, a chance to apply toxin. Okay. I think I like this. So if we know we're going in that direction, the fastest path would just be there. We would get resistance. Okay. We would want to skip this one. If we think we're going to focus on bows okay so that's this goes bow and then here so we would need two points here one point here and then two points here to get to death's imprint now from there i'm not sure where we would want to go i kind of like the bleeding effect as well so like these three, we might go in that direction after this. But first, let's make a beeline towards Death's Imprint. At least we have a plan, right? You just sometimes need a plan. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our first one point in Guile. And I don't know that we'll put another point there. It's just allowing us to eventually get to agility. But it does provide a little bit of defense. And since this is a hardcore character, that makes sense. Okay, so we have our first yellow drop, which means we're probably going back to two-handed unless it's just a really bad roll. We don't want that. These gloves could be okay, but let's look at uh, Shift F to bring, brings up loot filters. And, oh, actually we've been using the loot filter and I didn't even realize it. It was on by default. So this is the loot filter I made last night. Can we delete these by the way? Yeah. All right, so the Falcon loot filter, you see there's only three things on the ground. And if we do no loot filter, all of a sudden these boots show up, but because they don't apparently don't have anything. Is it, am I right that it's the boots? Yes. Which makes me think that there must be something wrong with the loot filter. Okay, so here's how we did it. The first, the bottom rule, which um, every rule that, so the, the higher the rule, it takes precedence, right? The first rule we made was we we're gonna hide all normal magic and rare items. So across, across the board, very basic rule. 
and then everything above that will be the exceptions. So if it has any of these specific affixes, then it will still show it. Uh, so we're not doing block or ward. It does say I have movement speed on. So again, I'm not sure why the boots didn't show up. We do have all of the rogue classes specific. We don't have any idols because there's a specific idle uh, rule that we've created. So again, I'm not exactly sure why those boots aren't showing up, but it might just be a thing that I don't get. Um, and then we have the idle rule, which allows for us to see idols. Because right now, since we're just playing hardcore after 1.0 for the first time, we need to build up some idols in our stash. So those are the three basic rules we have just to start off while we're leveling. And as we get more information about what our build's really gonna look like, we'll wanna make that much more specific. Um, now, anytime that you're out in the world, you can hold down X, and then you can see anything that your filter is, is keeping hidden from you. So these boots, it's weird. It looks to me like, for some reason, the filter is not showing boots at all. Um, and I don't know, I really don't know why that would be. Because the boot does have movement speed on there, so I, I feel like it should show it, but it's not. So let's just pick up the boots while they're visible, and then we'll get the other things as well. So for example, these boots have health regeneration. I guess we'll keep the strength, but let's see about this two-handed spear. It has a stun chance and shock on hit. So if we look at our main ability right now, it's gonna be puncture. 49 damage per second. If we equip that instead, it goes to 57. So yes, we'll, we'll use this for now. And everything else is fine. We're pretty much just gonna be attacking with right click at the moment. We'll see, but I don't think Puncture is going to not really use enough mana to even to even matter. <coughs> and if we want to, we can still use Shuriken for a little ranged. And again, eventually we're hoping to get a reasonably decent bow to drop as often as possible so that we can... we can see what puncture is like using a bow. Go ahead and pop that. Yeah, they are... Oh, they have more health. Oh, we're out of pots. Oh, my word. Okay. We got some health pots. That's where hardcore gets fun, I guess. That was almost the end of Raven right there. I do want something with faster attack speed. That's ridiculous. So I'm sort of already recognizing that we're a little on the weak side, so that's why I'm sort of farming this level before we're, we're coming up on a map that is just much harder early on. And we just don't have any drops right now, so. We need a little something. Yeah, 
either another level or a little bit of gear, which we can go back to town, see if we can sell what we've picked up, see if there's anything that the armorer is holding onto that would help us. That could be big. Yep, more health. We, that's, I mean, that's what we need. We just, we need more health. Maybe a little bit of resistance if we're lucky. Physical resistance, especially early in the campaign, can be a huge difference. Sacred Bloom. Right, there's level six. <sighs> We're trapped. So many enemies. But we're hanging in there. I'm kind of encouraged. All right, you see the gear on the ground. So let's hold this down. Ooh. And let's just make sure it doesn't have more health on it. 33 armor. It is more armor, but we lose vitality and health regeneration. So I don't think that's what we want. this do? Stun chance? That's fine. I don't think there's anything else over here, but just making sure. Stunning those guys. Oh, we did get skill point, so we're back to Swift Assassin. That's where we're going to go now. And, oh, we have a skill point here as well. So we needed two in this. So puncture to shred enemy resistances. So we're doing a little bit more damage with, with puncture. Another sacred bloom here. We still have that stun shrine up, so we're sort of hard locking everything down right now. Uh, gone. Hitting that new level, getting one or two pieces of gear, at least on this map, has made everything stabilized completely.
puncture does seem to hit more than one target, which is good. Alright, let's see what that is. Ivory dice. We probably don't want that. It just has mana. It does have... Yeah, we lose the fire. Re yeah, it does have critical chance. I mean, I would like that, but we've got to... Let's try to stay a little bit, a little bit healthy. Okay, this map can be interesting. Not what I was trying to do there. Okay, let's try to live through this. Yeah, we need a damage increase. I guess I never looked at that staff that was blue, so I doubt it would be an upgrade, but we'll check. 16 melee damage. Spell damage. Plus 6 melee physical damage. I don't think so. Alright, just using straight puncture here, and that did okay. It does look like it's hitting all of the current targets. So we're trying to figure out at what point do we need to use... At what point do we need to use shurikens, based on how many targets there are. Obviously range shurikens allows us to start off getting some damage in before they get close. But hopefully we will get... What is this? Vital Cloth of Armor in uh, Embers. So same armor, same vitality. Do you want more fire resist or the 16% increased health regen? I guess I'll keep the health regen since fire is so specific. Oh, interesting first, uh, first probably like somewhat scary mini boss I would say. For a hardcore tune as you can see he is well you know he's probably doing a lot of fire damage actually all right let's take a potion here and let's get that additional fire fire resistance all right i do think that's making a difference although we still cannot stand in it <gasps> This is so scary. We should have gone back to town and at least attempted to get. A little more gear. All right, he dropped another health pot, which is good. As long as we don't get just like one shot obliterated, I think we'll be okay here. I'm gonna take a health pot. Wow. Oh, short bow. All right, so now we can finally try it has bow damage and damage over time. Increased damage over time. Let's give it a, give it a spin here. Uh, 55. So it's definitely doing less damage per second, but it should be able to allow us to do some range. Let's get health regen back on there. And I think besides that, we are okay with what we have. All right, so we now have fast travel to here unlocked. Which I think we will go back here.
bows 18 yeah this one's already better crit strike slow on hit I like this yep okay great right. not happening actually I'm gonna I'm actually going to stop, uh, wrap up this first video here in just a minute. But before I do, let's at least see what puncture looks like with bow equipped. I don't think we've actually get, gotten to see it yet. Um, okay. Oh yeah, cool. And it looks like it does. It does penetrate. It looks like, which is great. at least for right now we'll see what other options avail themselves to us as we move forward but right now that looks good I like the way that's looking and let's head back to town and then we can wrap this one up so let me know how, how what you're thinking about the hardcore run versus the regular tune we have and uh, yeah I'm enjoying I've been hearing really good things about the uh, Falconeer uh, mastery class which obviously we're not there yet but we will get there eventually and um, I'm curious to see kind of how that how that plays but for now we're a rogue and risking the dangerous world as a hardcore tune all right thanks for watching I'll see you next time